hello everyone welcome to our next video which is about llm testing there are many uh, frameworks or libraries out there for llm testing we're gonna have a look on dwebvel before we start let's try to understand how llm testing works in a classic way we were using for example in unit test we would have check if if something contains uh, if x contain y or x is equal to y but when we are using llm agent uh, chatboard so our answer can be fuzzy for example the answer uh, of a question what is the capital of france the answer could be the paris or the paris is the capital of france so it's not always gonna be the same output so you cannot say okay i will call my llm get the response and i can do classic um, testing and assert equal paris so in llm as a judge here what we actually do so we're gonna involve an llm which gonna perform testing for us that means if we have produced an output we're gonna send this output to an llm and ask this produced output is correct according to this context that I have and depending on the score then we can say if the test is passed or the test is failed. Typically in um, LLM testing there are few concepts or few way of testing that you can perform if we take deep eval there is g evaluation typical classic or normal way of testing llm for example if you could have an answer the paris to the question what is the capital of france in g evaluation you can give some instruction it should not include some unnecessarily information so according to these instructions it will perform the test we will have a look uh, shortly on this one and then uh, there is also relevancy how relevant is our answer to our caution or how um faithfulness is if our answer is coming from our context or if the produced context how it's it's ranked when it's the context which we are passing to produce an output if it's relevant or it's irrelevant and then there is also a concept of deep uh, eye cycle click graph that's a bit more like a, going more like a nested way to check if producing an output have some kind of structure for example if it have this structure then check if it have um, for example section a header or footer and according to that then you can come up with a decision so on the first phase you could already say okay if it have a, for example in a produced output if it has a header footer then true so the test is true or false so it fails already and now if it's true now we go further if the header and footer contain some kind of information and then or only header is present only footer is present how much score you could give it because even if only header is present doesn't mean that the test is failed for some cases it's still the test is correct uh, the uh, the produced output is correct so let's have some uh, examples so i have here uh, from GEVL a very basic example here which is about correctness so we will determine it if the actual output that is this one it depends some might consider the cat while other might argue the dog so the question is the dog chased the cat up the tree who ran up the tree produced output is it depends some might consider cat and some might consider dog but expected output the cat that we wanted that it should produce now the uh, criteria is here if the actual output is correct based on expected output so in a typical case you would call your agent and then you would pass that output from, from that llm and pass and write it here where i just hard coded here and now if i would run this test it would fail because the actual output does not say that the cat have ran up the tree it's just saying yeah it depends on the situation so let's have a look I have already set it up a virtual environment here with, with uh, UV. You probably know how to set it up from my last video. And with UV pipe install, you can install the deep uh, avel uh, library. So let's run this. I'm using here Gemini. So you could use your local LLM model or you could set it up any Gemini or OpenAI model and pass there your Google key. This is just to set globally, but you can also pass your model to, to each matrix. As we see, this test is fail. As the expected answer is not correspondence to our actual output, which came from our LLM.
You could have also some evaluation steps, check weak language, contradicting uh, opinions. This is very, very basic example or how you could do the testing. Let's have a look on fit here. So my input is what if these shoe does not fit the output. We have 30 days return policy and retrieval context is we value customer certification satisfaction founded in 1995, which is not a relevant information. 30 day return policy for all items uh, is a relevant information. So now faithful in this test, we check if from the retrieval context, which from your rec, uh, the context comes the output, the actual output, is it uh, relevant or is it produced from our, our context? In this case, this would pass. Uh, so the first two are irrelevant. They are not relevant, but the third one is relevant and from here, the output has been produced so, and fit. So the score is one great job. The output is perfectly faithful to the retrieval context. So we have also here provided a threshold and in our case is it's one, which is mean that it's correct to to our uh, retrieval context. So if I type here something random, the cats are crazy. So there is no now information here in retrieval context that could produce an output 30 day return policy. We could even add one more. There is no return policy. So now this test should fail as uh, our context does not contain this information. But if I would now have an output that say, yes, we do value customer satisfaction and this should, uh, the test should pass. Now the produced output is coming from our uh, retrieval context. So the test is passed. What about if we want to test the other way around, like the retrieval context, which is coming that it's in correct order or correctly ranked instead of now testing that our output is coming from uh, uh, yeah, from the retrieval context. And then there is uh, another kind of test um, that call contextual uh, precision. So we check now that the relevant, that our retrieval context is relevant to the given input and ranked higher than irrelevant ones. Um, so if we check now uh, this example, we have a 30 day return policy. You are eligible for 30 day for refinement with no extra. So there is a 30 day return policy for all time that is ranked here on top. That mean if I test now, we would see in the score, how the score is done and we say the score is one because the most relevant information was perfectly ranked at the top. So we see that the return policy is indeed ranked one, which means it's, it's in the top of our list and others are irrelevant. But if I move this output now somewhere, let's say in the middle, so now it's not ranked top and the test would fail. So now what, what's the difference between this te test and the faithful test? Um, so this test would fail now. And in the faithful test, it doesn't matter where I move these. So the test would pass because the customer uh, satisfaction is produced output. And indeed there is information in the retrieval context. Whereas in, in our, this, uh, contextual, uh, precision method, we, we focus more on how our retrieval context is. So there, there are many metrics here in this framework. So I hope I could uh, point it out some uh, important or most usually uh, uh, the metrics. There's one more, um, the relevancy uh, metric. We can also have a look on here. Threshold is 0 uh, 0.7. So the input is what if these shoe don't fit? And the answer we're producing here, we offer a 30 day full return at no extra cost. So in the relevancy test, this will check how relevant is our output to our question. Are they relevant? So in this case, they are relevant because if shoes does not fit and some, if uh, answer is coming, we are 30 day uh, full refund at no cost. 
it's most likely relevant to the shoe. If I would have uh, actual output, yeah, the Paris is uh, the city of France. That test would fail because the output is not relevant to the input. So I just give you very basic overview about this testing. Let me know if, if we could deep down more into it or maybe should use uh, to show you to using a uh, real case scenario where we call an LLM and get that output and then use it in, uh, in our test. Yeah, so thank you very much and hopefully see you in the next video. Bye bye.